Hi, my name is Chloe Hollings, and I would dip brioche in my immigrant jam. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another beautiful day on the cruise line of Immigrant Jam Headquarters Incorporated. I'm your host, Lucy Pohl. This is the Immigrant Jam Podcast, where we celebrate all things immigrant and all people immigrant and talk to the coolest, most amazing, most delicious and nutritious immigrants in all the lands. Hello, welcome back if you've listened to one episode before. And uh, hello, if you're new, uh, welcome, uh, bienvenue, because today we are <laughs> traveling uh, to France uh, via Australia, via LA. My very good friend, um, my uh, birthday twin, my Overwatch co-star, uh, the insanely talented, amazing writer, actor, voice actor, a woman extraordinaire. <laughs> Miss <laughs> Chloe Hollings is our guest today. Oh. Welcome, Chloe. Hello. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. What an introduction. Well, it's easy when it's someone <laughs> oh, <stop> so it. <laughs> fabulous. Is that right? Fabulous. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chloe, uh, full disclosure, everybody, we are very, very, very good friends. We love each other dearly. We do have the same birthday. We do. That the is the 15th not of April, yep. which is fucking awesome it's so awesome it's, it's so the best awesome day. because the best people yes. are born on april 15th <laughs> as everyone knows. everybody knows that it's <laughs> obvious um uh you are like nine years older than me um <laughs> no okay that was a joke she's not older than me i'm the older one here it's okay the wiser one i'm the wiser one i was just you know making sure everything's good here on planet earth for her arrival <laughs> preparing everything setting it up but Chloe, you are from the country known as croissant, or as you people say, <laughs> France. La France. La France. Yes. Uh, yeah, I sure am. I was born there. My dad is, is French. My dad's family is French. My mother is, though, British. And Australian. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, did I make the Australian thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> she has a double. I mean, actually, the immigrant story starts with my mother because she emigrated from England to Australia when she was young. Ah. And then she spent most of her like formative years in Australia. So she, I, I don't know if she feels more Australian, but I, I know Australia is like home to her, which is why when I was four, we went to live there. So we moved from France to Melbourne. And how long did you live there for? Three years. From four to seven? Yeah. Interesting. Just enough to learn English and uh, to get attached and to be traumatized when we left. <laughs> oh, no! no. And then to learn French again when I came out. Well, yeah, basically, sorry, I owe, I think I owe speaking two languages to that experience specifically. So you uh, were four, you spoke French already. Yes. Then you lost the French? Did I you stop did. Because you, you moved without your dad? No. Okay. But I did Stop that talking thing. to your dad. Well, because my mom had been, yeah, it's just like, do not speak to me. <laughs> um, no, you know, in France, my mother had been talking to me in English. Mm. But then I did that thing that a lot of bilingual kids do. I mean, so I've heard, I don't know what your experience is, that when I went to kindergarten in France... I like rejected English mm -hmm. because it was like the abnormal language. Right. And so when we moved to Australia, obviously my mission was to fit in and not be an alien. And so I did the same thing. I rejected French. And my dad always says that like if he wanted to drive me crazy, all he had to do was like speak in French in front of my friends and stuff. And like I would give him the nastiest, the nastiest stare. Well, which is just a normal French stare. Yeah. <laughs> which is just, I would just light a cigarette. Just the normal French stare. <laughs> what do you want to hear? Um, so your mom had an accent in French before you moved? An accent? Yeah. As, a, yes. A British oh, Australian she still does. accent. She, oh, but you mean when she speaks English or French? When she speaks French. Oh, yeah, she still does. And were you embarrassed of that as a kid? Hmm. Or did you think it was cool? I definitely didn't think it was cool, but I don't think I was embarrassed. I don't think I was embarrassed. 
No, because also English is one of those languages that it's okay to be an English speaker. Mm, and we have kind point. of icons, you know, like Jane Birkin. Mm-hmm. She has an English accent mm. when she speaks French. So it's kind of like I remember one of my teachers saying that my mom had a delicious accent. Mm. <laughs> um, I was more and then they embarrassed. Had an affair. <laughs> <laughs> but I was more embarrassed when she wrote it. Ah, she because made, she would make mistakes. Yes, lots of spelling mistakes. And that was more shocking to me. I actually, I was doing like, you know, I was doing the writing fairly young. Yeah. Um, Like on the, like my, my school notes and stuff. Uh, Yeah, but no, I, I wasn't too embarrassed about that. I don't it's think. interesting, right? How like this like immigrant, having immigrant parents, mm-hmm. it, like you're an immigrant now here yourself. You were an immigrant mm-hmm. in Australia. Your mom was an immigrant in France. Yeah, my dad was an immigrant in Australia. Your yeah. dad was an immigrant in Australia. But the experience of having immigrant parents is this experience of becoming a parent yourself. Yeah. N- just because of those things of like having to correct them. And it changes the dynamic doesn't it? Yeah, and having, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not looking for the word superiority, but having this kind of authority right. over them. Yes. And to be the one who knows what's right and wrong, which mm-hmm. is not supposed to be your job until like much later on. Yeah, and, and the person that they need help yeah, from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of the other way around. I often wonder, like, are my parents so, like... <laughs> needy no like childlike or like do i feel like such a parent to my parents all the time because of this like Mm. experience of us moving here and them not speaking english well and would it have been the same if we wouldn't have moved here you know what i mean that dynamic of course well do you like rediscover them when you go to germany rediscover my parents no but like do you have a different relationship do they oh. become like suddenly like really on top of stuff and or um, do they still need you no <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, it was just an excuse <laughs> yeah, exactly no but i i guess in a way that is true because i do now ask them for help with mm. german especially like if it's very formal german you know sometimes yeah. i need some help with that right, right. so at least there's that i can be like oh they can help me with that and that's I'll, about it <laughs> no, sorry, mom. I know you're listening, <laughs> but you don't understand this anyway because you don't speak English. <laughs> oh, well. So did you, so um, you moved to Australia when you were four and then back when you were seven. Were you happy to go back? No. You loved it in Australia? I loved it in Australia. And I think it wasn't even about loving it. It was about like knowing it. Mm. <laughs> like that's what I knew. That was my life. Um like I like to think now it's easy for me to say now that uh, the, there was the beach and the sunshine but the truth is I don't think that's what was going through my mind it's just that I didn't want to be taken away from what I knew and where my friends were and the at surfers an age that, and the surfers, <laughs> at an age when um, y- yeah you just don't know what anything else looks like yeah so I remember distinctively distinctly distinctly I remember distinctly um, thinking, okay, like I was aware that I was powerless in this situation. I could not make them change their minds, but I decided like, I'm just not going to learn French again. Wow. I will not speak French. (laughs) And, uh, And I, and I held on to that. So at home, I just kept speaking English. They put me back in school really fast so i just kind of had to adapt Mm. (laughs) i didn't really have a choice so i did learn french because also that's just what the brain does you know uh, yeah fascinatingly um but i think i owe kind of speaking two languages again i owe it to that as well that i was kind of determined to make them pay (laughs) to punish them did you find france weird when you moved back do you remember like your first day back I don't remember my first day back, but I remember my first day back at school. Right. And I remember the shock. Because in Australia, um, there's a lot of space. Mm. You've been to Australia. Like, yeah. there's a lot of space and very few people. So my, like, my schoolyard was huge. There was a football field and there was, a, like, you know, like these games that you find at, at 
kids parks you know like a slide and all that <laughs> and then you're there like, was like you a know door. these games this weird <laughs> thing they call a playground you know with the pedophiles yes, everywhere <laughs> that's what i mean <laughs> and then there was like this gate and there was this like field just like a field that we could go like in the summer and everything it was huge and the school was huge and i remember on the morning that i went back to school in france it was like january and it was really cold and dark. And my dad said, you know, so this is how the day is going to go. You're going to you're gonna go to school now and you're going to be in the <laughs> classroom. I'm like, what? I'm like picturing him being like, and then you will carry these five <laughs> sacks of coals back to our seventh story no! apartment. <laughs> he was just trying to like let me know how it's yeah. going to be. Like you're going to go in the classroom and then at 10 a.m. you're going to go in the courtyard. And he just warned me like just... Just bear in mind, it's going to be a little smaller than what you're used to. And when I got into that courtyard, something happened to my brain. Like, I was trying, I was prepared, but I could not have been prepared. And like, I saw the walls kind of, like, shrink on me. Wow. Like, it was such a weird thing. I don't know how to describe it. But I remember getting into that courtyard and, like, having this effect of, like, oh, whoa, it is really tiny. Um, yeah, that's what I remember the most. And then it's just like, yeah, relearning French, mm. learning how to write. You know, we write differently. We don't learn script letters. We learn, uh, you know, uh, we, we write with the curvy letters. Oh, how do you say that? like uh, uh, script. Well, no. Not block letters. Yeah, script not block letters. letters. My Sorry. Cursive, right? Cursive. <laughs> <laughs> we speak English here. Hi. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for the French writing cursive, but in Australia I'd learned how to, you know, block letters and so I had to learn all of that. Yeah, and that was pretty much it. I relate to that story because I remember when I uh, I had to come here to take a test, to, uh, like an admissions test to get into the school I was going to go to. Yeah. So we, my mom and I came here before we officially moved here a few months before. And I took the test and I had never been to New York. I'd never been to the U.S. And, and I felt really cool. I was like eight. And then we went back to Hamburg. And I'll never forget sitting in the car driving back from the airport because I was looking at all the buildings and mm. I was a kid so I had this image that somebody had come with like giant scissors yeah. and cut off all the tops of the buildings because everything seemed so small oh, all of yeah, a sudden. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. like oh my god I think that was like one of my first memories of like experiencing a perspective change yeah, exactly you know? exactly and, and that's kind of i guess what you know this immigration experience also is a lot of the times this like very true like you you live in all these different perspectives like you see things from all these different perspectives at a younger age yeah because yeah, yeah. you're cross-cultural right and you adapt to them right i mean i find myself to be a very adaptable person and i think it's mostly yeah. thanks to that is that good i think it's uh, both good and a survival mechanism <laughs> you know so i think um like We've talked about this before. I have this thing with birthdays. Mm. Like if someone tells me their birthday and that I see them once in my life, I will remember their birthday forever. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I think that's one of the things that I got from <laughs> feeling like I needed to, uh, you know, know things about people right. in order to have some kind of... Yeah, it's some kind of control in the situation. Or yeah, no, like I'm that. the same. If somebody tells me their credit card number once in my <laughs> life. <laughs> no, but totally. I mean, Larissa Turkeltaub, right? January 22nd. Yeah, no. Yeah. Camille Armand, February 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say names of random people. <laughs> you can fact, fact check this. Camille Armand <laughs> oh, I love that that's a real name. Camille Armand <laughs> Exactly um, what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> okay, just a uh, real quick. You said you want to dip brioche in your yes. immigrant jam. Uh, how many croissants have you eaten in your life? In my think? life? Yeah. Just round it, round. <laughs> like 10,000? 10, 10,000. See? And that's what we do here at Immigrant Jam, uh, oh. the podcast. We get uh, the people who have eaten the most croissants. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but then you lived in France, a mm -hmm. merry, happy French existence. 
Mm-hmm. more or less uh, as far as you can be happy yeah, as a yeah, french yeah. person um, <laughs> as far as much as is allowed exactly by french law uh not not you have to also be cool obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and then you decided at some point to move to america yes was that a hard decision? Was it an easy? Was it an easy de- decision because you grew up with an immigrant I mean, as your mom and you had had that experience before? Well, this is the funny thing. I, because I had an immigrant mom, and because my mother, this is the thing, my mother was considered Australia to be her home, and she was living in Paris. Uh, those two places are very far away from each other, and so she mostly suffered. From I think she felt like, oops, I fell in love in France and I have kids here and how am I like what are my choices what are, how do mm. I go back, do I you know especially because when my parents got separated she was like do I take my kids away from their father mm-hmm. so far away so so she kind of found herself stuck there and it was really far away there wasn't necessarily like everything we have now in terms of um whatsapp and all of that so as a result i think as a result because it wasn't conscious but i rooted myself very deeply in paris and most specifically like this one area of paris where i lived my whole life i was not planning to move which is montmartre montmartre oh yes um which is like this beautiful historic yeah artist beautiful neighborhood where sacre coeur yes. is right and the... for anyone who's seen amelie the movie that's yep. where it takes place and it's very cute and it's right but it, honestly it could have been just been anywhere it just happens to be where i was born and so i kind of like stuck to it um and so yeah i wasn't planning and then overwatch happened i was invited to blizzcon which is this big convention in los angeles and for those of you that don't know overwatch is a video game that chloe and i both voice characters on chloe voices a spider uh assassin woman uh yeah femme fatale yeah yeah but she's also a spider isn't she i mean isn't she considered she, a spider? She's not, she's not a spider. No, but she but has like a spider personality. Yeah, maybe symbol. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Yes, she's supposed to be spider esque, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but she is a woman. Widowmaker. <laughs> Widowmaker. Yeah, Widowmaker. And so I, I went to LA in 2017, and basically I was like, oh wow. Um, I don't know. I was, I was. There was something about it that I felt called to. So called to. Yes. Uh huh. Is that what I, yeah? No, I thought you said cold. No, and cold. I was like, that too. can't be it. Yeah. And I decided to, yeah, move there. So I started all the immigration process and everything. And it took way longer than I had ever, that I could ever have anticipated. And the funny thing is that my, so again, I didn't want to do things like my mother at all. And then when I finally got to L.A., I was 31 by then with all the like I had lost. I, it took me like a year and a half to get my papers, which I hadn't planned. And I realized that my mother had moved to France when she was 31 and that my dad had was 31 when he moved to Australia. Wow. And I got to L.A. when I was 31. And I was like, that's weird. And that is it. weird. <laughs> You're like, that's weird, but, <laughs> but <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And did you, did it exceed your expectations? Were you disappointed? Were you, did you feel like, oh, because. Well, I mean. <laughs> like, I grew up in New York and I always felt like, I grew up in New York, I can live anywhere. And then I found out the hard way, I can't live anywhere. Because nothing Because nothing compares. is like New York. Yeah, and I don't know if it's the same for Paris because Paris is also a very epic, strong, yeah, yeah, yeah. distinct, vibrant, amazing, <sighs> yeah. unique city. Paris is incredible, and I don't think I can find another Paris. But there are qualities to L.A., and I mean America, I think, in general, but mostly L.A., that Paris doesn't have. So, like, I remember spending... <laughs> Three months were what? Maybe? No, I was going to say obesity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <know. laughs> yes, but that's not what I was looking for. Um, but no, I, I, 
spent three months in LA one summer, like to test it before I actually went to live there. And when I went back to Paris, I could feel that like my shoulders were too wide. Hmm. What does that like, mean? Like, what I mean is that Paris is a small city with small sidewalks, oh, okay. small <laughs> pavements. You're in the metro. There are, you know, there are a million people in the metro. So you're all crampled up. And I think your body gets used to like sharing the space and like. Mm. Making yourself, which is also kind of a very like socialist thing to do, I guess, <laughs> as opposed to like being in L.A. where you're like, no one's on, you know, you're, you're whatever. I don't know. You your take city. up space. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I feel so. It's like big skies, big palm trees and um, stuff like that. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I wasn't looking for a Paris when I went to L.A. But. I think I prefer Paris. <laughs> Why? I don't know. No, I don't. Th I, I prefer the European way of life, I think. Which is what? Which is I like to have a neighborhood. I like to have a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like to be able to walk, <laughs> like walk everywhere. Actually, mm -hmm. maybe it's New York, too. I mean, maybe it's not just I know you were getting there. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. You know, uh, you lead a horse <laughs> to water. But uh... no, no, L.A. is great. <laughs> um, we love L.A. here, right? My. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like. Something more real, I guess. More real, more practical. What so more LA enjoyable is fake. seasons. Um, seasons. I feel like yeah. it's hard to really keep it real in LA. Okay, I, well, I, I feel like it's hard. I, I know. I think I know what you mean, but what do you mean? Well, I mean that friendships. <sighs> it's hard to pin it down. A, it's everyone has a dream. Everyone has something to accomplish that is very specific and everyone makes a lot of sacrifice to be in that city specifically you hear all <laughs> yeah. these stories of like i arrived in la in my car and i just like i had packed everything i owned and i had left my family yeah and that's great probably like in the beginning but i feel like as the years go by the sacrifice the number of the amount of sacrifices you know expands and so people really need their dreams to mm -hmm. come true and i think that affects relationships and mm -hmm. i also find that it's a city where it's hard to not necessarily be well <laughs> <laughs> no and no 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 I and actually that's the most diplomatic way no, no, that no, no, anybody's no. ever said people in LA are fucking crazy no. <laughs> no because I also didn't say it right I'm so sorry I mean to not be well it's you know hard. LA is a place where mental health is a bit <laughs> challenging let's put it that way oh my god no I mean it's hard to not be well like it's hard to be I feel like you always have to say that everything is great mm. all the time yeah. And that's mostly true. I mean, but you know, it's it's just a weird it's a weird thing. And I feel like after a while you kind of even I feel like I I don't really know what I feel anymore. Mm. Do you feel more European in LA than in Europe? The same? Uh-huh. I think the same. Because for me, I'm asking because for me when I go outside of New York to like what's more like America, I always feel more European than I, in, in Europe, I actually feel more American. I'm like, why is everything so fucking slow? Why isn't this open 24 hours? Like, why aren't people nice in customer service? Yeah. But then when I go to LA or places in America, because New York is not really America in yeah, that way, yeah, yeah. I feel so European. All of a sudden I'm like, in Europe, we do this this way. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do that too. I do that all the time. It's horrible. Um, no, actually when I'm in Europe, I'm very happy. I do, I do have to remind myself, like you're in Europe and your waiter will never come to see you and if you want like the bill you have to ask like 10 times and it's like do they want you to pay the bill uh, and also i'm like yes but that's what you get when the waiter doesn't need you i just realized and i do like that that is true but i just realized why people have less problems over there with like weight issues 
why people have less weight <laughs> issues there because the waiter never comes. <laughs> <laughs> they never get served their food. They can't order as much. No, the waiter but never comes. Like to pay the bill, you right. get served, and then they leave you alone. In America, or I don't know, maybe this is just LA, but like the waiter comes every two minutes. Is everything going okay? Is everything mm. fine? Can I do something for you? I, mm. I'm always like. Leave me alone. <laughs> we're just we're in the middle of a conversation. But you can't here. say that because you're in LA, so yes! you have to go. So everything's, like, everything's great. Everything's great. Thank you. Yeah. In New York, you can say "Leave me alone" and it'd be okay. No, but I also wouldn't do that because I'm also part British. Ah, see, now we're getting to the yeah. bottom of it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell someone to. But I do like that they leave us alone. I also just like that there's no pressure on me to make this waiter's life good or bad. <laughs> Oh, God, like, oh, you mean because you're responsible for their tip? Okay. They don't need my no, but I think right. that's why they don't care about you're us. You're like, I'm so happy that <laughs> there's no expectation come. for me to jerk this waiter <laughs> off. God, America! I mean, really, how many waiters do I have to blow to make you people happy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you see what you mean? What, what yeah. I mean? Well, yes, now we're getting into the socioeconomic aspects <laughs> of this podcast. Uh, we cover that a lot here. Uh, but that's true. That That is very true. And it is uh, very strange for someone, especially from the Western European countries that mm. are mostly social social democracies yeah, yeah, right, yeah. to come here and see all these sort of yeah, things yeah, that are yeah. so culturally accepted that we find kind of outrageous exactly. over there. And right? so to answer your question, I don't feel more European here, but I am reminded constantly of what it means to be European. Mm. Because here I'm afraid of, of like, you know, having a health issue or like I'm afraid of, you know, all these things that in Europe it's like it doesn't matter. You can go to the doctors. You can do this. You can do that. Mm. And um, yeah. So do you feel French or do you feel European? Because that's another thing that sometimes I have, like, I, like, grapple with a little bit where people are like, oh, my God, that's so European. And I'm like, you know, in Europe, nobody does that. <laughs> like, you don't really use that word European in <laughs> Europe so much. No, in no, Germany, no. you don't at all. Not it's like you're German, all. you're French, you're Italian. You never describe yourself or not never, but not usually as European. No, never, actually. Yeah. And I never did until I lived in the U.S. Right. Because once I got to the U.S., I realized that I felt close to anyone from Europe. <laughs> yeah, I realized they don't know what Europe is. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I right. felt... You felt close to anyone from Europe. Anyone that's interesting. from Europe. Yeah, that's not, true. And it wasn't like yeah. dating. Mm. I could date easily. I mean, you know, like effortlessly... <laughs> Someone from Europe, wherever that, that was. But there was always this huge culture gap with Americans. Mm. Any American, wh wherever that was. Give so, us an example. Well, just the whole, like, um, exclusivity thing mm. is not European, for example. Not at all. Like, so we don't date multiple people and then, you know, bid for the best or whatever. Like, we don't <laughs> count points and then finally land on the one that won whatever the contest. I, I, I don't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And it's also, kinda, that's kind of what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say in the talk. That concept of the talk. Do you know the talk? Oh, the talk that, like, can we be exclusive? Yeah, now? the talk that you're supposed what to have is here. That? Yeah, like, we don't have that. The talk is the kiss. Like, that's our talk. The like, talk if is I you're sleeping you, together and yeah, hanging exactly. out every day. I kiss you. I expect not to find yeah. you kissing the talk another is, woman tomorrow. I smiled at you in the subway. Okay. <laughs> We're getting married. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> Give yeah. me your credit no, card. But that is the difference. Mm -hmm. If If we go on a date, going well we kiss and life all around i don't expect you to be with anyone else tomorrow i also don't believe that we're gonna get married and that you're gonna meet my parents next week mm -hmm. it actually might end in a week but during that week i will be like on board mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and that's a major difference yeah and yeah in fact in like german that. and i don't know how it is in french we don't have the word no. for dating yeah, no, as, we don't. As such, you know. People are starting to use date, mm. like uh, as an Le Anglicism. date or la date. Or... J'ai un date. J'ai ouais, un date. Le date. Un date, ouais. Yeah, but un date is le date. Y yes, but we never <laughs> say that. We just say Le date. date. Le date. I love that. Uh, 
Oh, uh, or actually, was... maybe it's feminine. Maybe it's m- uh, une date. Une date. Yes, yes, yes. Une date. Une date. I don't so know funny. how English words get, um, you know, given a genre, a masculine or feminine, but whatever. There's some man locked up in a basement who decides it. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, une date. <laughs> so, we're starting to say it, but we never used to have that word, and we don't have the word for, like, exclusive. Exclusivity, yeah. 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 So relationships are different, though, aren't they? Friendships, too, do you think yeah. so? Um, well, actually, a lot of my friends in America are French, so... Um. <laughs> They're like, actually, I've never talked to an American person. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I... I... I don't know. No, what I can say, I feel like, for example, the dinner experience is different. Ooh, I love this. Yeah. Tell us about like, this. Like, I have, you're in, in France, in Europe, I think, at the dinner table with people of multiple ages, generations, everything, and you're talking about, like, real stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you're talking about politics, and you're talking about this, and you're thinking of stuff, and I don't think i've had that experience a lot in america but i don't want to sound mean no 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 because i'm also not sure if that's true or not well i i understand what you mean for i've talked about this before i for me like i had to wrap my head around the words used to just like that's intense or that's dark when people go oh my god i'm sorry not to be intense but you know, the war in Ukraine is, yeah, and you're yeah. like, and it's like, okay, yeah, it's but happening. Like, yeah, exactly, it's it. happening. Yeah, that's not, in t- or like, not to get too dark, but mm. you know, my grandpa died yesterday and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what? That's not like dark, like dark yes. in that sense. Yes. Like we're just talking about real stuff. Yeah. That what label. Are you supposed to just like journal about it? <laughs> you know? yeah. And... yeah, exactly. What am I supposed to just make a TikTok video about it? <laughs> No, but um, but that like label that 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 people use here a lot, and of course, like you can't generalize and you know all no. of that. But that's used a lot for what you're describing as like you talk about real things. I I also feel like in Germany or with people from Europe, you don't have those labels. It's kind of more common to talk about things like that and not keep this like like kind of like surface level. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, lightness and what i haven't found so far is well i mean what i realize in in europe is like at some point you know it's been three hours like the second bottle of wine is empty and we're still <laughs> you know they're like there's food everywhere and there's this like common effort to get to the end of something and there's mm. this common effort to get to the end of a topic so it's not just about like talking about this stuff like this happened to me or oh the war in ukraine or oh i I lost someone in my family or whatever it's also about this question like oh this happened to me this morning and then kind of the the common elaboration Mm -hmm. and and i think that is so precious and so cool as well because Mm. you feel so alive i mean i i just love those moments Mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, I I totally understand what you mean. At the same time, uh, there mm-hmm. are moments where I'm like, oh, I love that here you keep <laughs> this sort of like distance, you know what I mean? And you keep it like, you keep it pleasant, you know what I mean? Mm. Like you're trying to, the, it, it kind of um, is <laughs> symbolic in the way that you ask people, how are you here? And it's not a real question. Like yeah, you're not really yeah, yeah. asking for the answer. In Germany, if you ask people, how are you? They'll give you a real answer. And you're like, oh God, why? Did I ask this guy how he is? I didn't want to know, <laughs> you know. And here it's kind of just a formality, and it's like this pleasantry, right? And mm. and I guess you know, I remember when we moved here, my parents were like, "Oh my god, we love it here because people leave dinner parties after like an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like they come, they eat, and then they hang out for like twenty minutes and leave. And in yeah. Germany, they stay for like five hours yeah, and never, yeah, yeah. Ble- and you'd have to be like, go away, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, I, I, I somehow yeah. like both worlds in a way, but I see what you mean. And, and I do sometimes think that with, with people here, 
there's sometimes it's harder to really get to know people mm. and you become fa fast friends and there's fast I love yeah. you's and you're the best and you know all these things that are that don't sound weird to say in English in America American English at least yeah, because yeah, they yeah. do sound weird in Britain to be like oh my god you're the best I love you so much <laughs> yeah you're like that that doesn't sound weird here if mm. I would say that in German I, it would sound strange no, yeah. nobody says that ever if i would yeah. tell somebody oh my god you're the best i love your pants i love you <laughs> they'd be like are you fucking insane and out of your mind yeah. they would think i'm like mocking them yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. um but there i i don't know there's sometimes you know i grew up in a family that's like oh my god they always are like uh, discussing politics and art and sometimes <laughs> i sit there now and i'm like oh my god i think i've become really american because i'm like can i'm so tired of this shit can we just yeah. talk about like can we just shoot the shit you know but yeah you maybe in nine years <laughs> i will feel the same way no <laughs> i'm not nine years older that was an exaggeration i know no anyway but the the, the um... it's eight and a half <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean i think the real reason is that i'm it makes me uncomfortable because I don't know what to say. Like, oh, small I've just talk been... makes you uncomfortable? Yeah. Shooting the shit? Yeah. I can do it for like two minutes. Right. And then uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then you go, genocide. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I'm sorry. I have to leave. <laughs> no, and that's why I find myself like asking a lot of questions to people about themselves. Because at least I feel mm. like that's that's a good middle ground for me. Um, mm. because I can be interested in that. That can be a real topic. People like talking about themselves, generally speaking, at least in LA. And uh, <laughs> and so it works for everyone. Mm, that's great. Interesting. That's how I do it. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Do you think that's a thing of being an immigrant as well? Like trying to connect with mm. people always. And so like trying to ask them things about them so you can connect with them, <laughs> asking them what their birth date is so you can remember it forever <laughs> and like creepily call them, <laughs> although you've only met them once. <laughs> Hello, Steven Spielberg. Um, I don't know why I said Steven Spielberg. You could look his birthday up. That makes no sense at all. Okay, sorry. What is this for? That's a stress chicken. Oh. You, oh my god yeah the noise is quite stressful shit. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> paradoxically <laughs> but uh ooh, no i don't know no i think for me the fitting in has been more like okay uh um mimicking people yes like my accent is all over the place because i can't help myself i just pick people's accents and i think that comes directly from moving to a country when i was four having to learn this language i remember specifically the first time that i said hello like hello in a way that sounded so good. australian hello i yeah. can't do it <laughs> <laughs> no in a way that sounded real and i because we'd been in australia for maybe i don't know three weeks or something and i was like hello 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 yeah? and then one day they're like hi chloe hello and i remember i have that memory so I think then I never got rid of that. Like I was mm. my the dopamine levels were just like, ah, we'll do this forever. And I just pick people's accents. And I think probably I've maybe less now that I'm getting a little older and wiser, but definitely in the past, like trying to first, a lot of energy given in trying to see what's acceptable to you before I can figure out what's acceptable for me. Mm. What do you think about this before I can decide what I decide about this? Mm. Like, you know, kind of always being on the safe side, but also always being the foreigner. Mm -hmm. Like I will adapt to you and I will never expect you to adapt to me. Like why, why wouldn't it be, you know, the other way? Why wouldn't I be like, this is what I believe and you can do whatever you want. And yeah, that has been a big motif for me. Mm. Interesting. And do you like it? Do you like being the foreigner? No. No, no. I, I And again, I think it was totally subconscious. Mm -hmm. I think that was just a, a way that I had something what that about I had now? developed. <sighs> 
I mean, in a way, you know, if we look at Overwatch, for mm-hmm. example, it's a good example. You made a career yeah. out of being the foreigner in the sense of like your character on the video game has a French accent and speaks French and English. And yeah. And when I lived in France, I worked in English all of the time. Mm hmm. Um, everything I did was practically in English. So I owe a lot to speaking two languages uh, and having a double culture. But I don't think I like being a foreigner, nor do I dislike it. But I also think I'm very fortunate in a way that it's cool to be French. Like n- none of this is 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 heavy to carry. Mm-hmm. When I'm in America and I say I come from France, like, oh, my God. I love Paris. <laughs> and um, and when I'm over there and I say that I'm half Australian they or English. You. No. And then you're like, oh, that like means everyone me. <laughs> dreams of going to Australia. Right. Like, so it, it hasn't put me in a bad place. Yeah. I'm not even American. So I never even got that. <laughs> no, but I mean, you're I never like, <laughs> I'm not even one of you fucking idiots. So, I mean, I never even got that like, oh, like Trump is president or mm. this. Or that. Like, I never got any of that. I just got like the, the, the cool bits of both. You just get like, how do I make mousse au chocolat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how do you make it? Um, no, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> but uh, wow, that is true. It's funny, isn't it? Because I have the kind of an opposite experience in the sense that being German has never been cool. Mm. Nobody really goes, oh, my God, German. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. People kind of go like, oh, cool, just because it's foreign. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, nobody's yeah. ever, I mean, no one's like, people I dream like, of going, well, I mean, Berlin maybe, but. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but it's kind of weird to be like, oh my God, I fucking love <laughs> Germans, you know, and Germans. Yeah. That's another thing, like, you know, uh, don't, aren't proud of being, it's not, it's not really mm. okay to be proud mm. to be German. So that's mm. interesting. Yeah, of course, people are all over it because everybody dreams of Paris. Yeah. And Paris <laughs> is the quintessentially coolest thing ever, really. Mm. Paris is like cooler <laughs> even than New York for some people. No. That are blind and deaf and mute. <laughs> and no. we hate them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Paris is very special. I love Paris. And you've got to love Paris. If you don't love Paris, you don't love love. And romance. And light. And baguettes. Baguettes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you wrote a book um, uh, called uh, Fuck le Régime. Yes. Fuck diets. Yes. Um, Not the regime. But it's also about, you know, I'm going to like, it's a little bit of a stretch, but... Um, but not really, because it's also about like accepting yourself the way you are, right? Oh, it's mostly about that. Yeah, but I mean, also in the in the, what we were talking about now, oh, you know, yes. like yes, yes, accepting yes, yes, yes. yourself as the foreigner, making career out of it, and always kind of oh. being an outsider. And although it's about body, accepting mm-hmm. your body the way it is, um, that's kind of uh, an over overriding theme i guess yes with you as well right That's can you tell true. us um in a few sentences about <laughs> le book as they say in france uh, <laughs> that <means the> goat. <laughs> and then we're gonna talk about some sayings and do a little questionnaire with you okay oh well the, Wait, the book, book means the goat yeah the male goat <laughs> le book that's le amazing book. <laughs> hello i am american i would like to buy le book <laughs> Oh, you must go to the farm. Oh, they sell books on farms here. <laughs> we sell books everywhere. We are French. Uh, no, yeah. Well, I mean, you described it perfectly well. <laughs> are you okay? I love it. The goat. Um... <laughs> Le book. I'm definitely doing that next time I'm in France. <laughs> yeah. Je veux un book. Je veux le book. <laughs> Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, I have to tell you a story after this. Oh, okay. After your story. (laughs) All right. I mean, I can tell you now. Wait, you were going to talk about your book. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Le book. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, I was 22 when I decided to stop dieting. That was, that's basically the story of my book. I realized diets did not work. And I also realized, huh, I don't think I really need to diet. So I wasn't like anorexic or anything. I didn't have, um, it wasn't like a mental health issue. Oh, 
how would you call it in English? It wasn't like a a mental yeah, health yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disorder. It was just like me, just like most of my friends, most of the women that I'd known in my life, like my mother, like everyone. I was just obsessed with just being slim. And at some point I was like, I hate this. Why do I do this to myself? So I stopped. I put on a lot of weight in uh, quite a short amount of time but as I put on that weight I was trying to figure things out like why is this important to me why do I eat the way I eat why do I want to what what does thinness mean to me what does being fat mean to me all of these things and I came to a point where I literally for the first time in my life didn't care anymore and lo and behold I just lost all the extra weight that I had put on during that process naturally um, without really thinking about it. So it sounds like I'm saying, what a great thing that I lost that weight, but that is not my point. <laughs> my point is that A, they are lying to us. We, no one needs to diet, um, but we do need to love ourselves. I mean, at least I believe it. Uh, I'm very happy. This was like 10 years ago now. So I'm just happy to think that for the past 10 years, I haven't devoted any of my energy to like counting calories or, you know, pulling my stomach in or like not eating dessert which I think is such a waste of life <laughs> um yeah and then that's basically everything that I put into my book amazing 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 I mean how could you be from France and not eat dessert that's exactly. the craziest thing I've ever heard in my so life so many do <laughs> um wow uh, okay, well, the book is going to be out in English at some point because some point. you're working on that. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for it. Or maybe it's a good reason to learn French, you lazy pieces of shit. Come on, <laughs> what the fuck? Learn French, read Chloe's book already. Fuck le regime. Read le book. The goat. <laughs> that reminded me of this um, time that I was living on the Lower East Side and I found a dead mouse in the middle of my living room and I had a total meltdown and freaked out because I couldn't bring myself to touch this dead mouse and throw it out mm -hmm. and I had to go somewhere and I had to get through the living room to leave the apartment and get ready and so I had to move this mouse and I was freaking out and calling people and nobody could come and help me and then I heard somebody walk up the stairs in the staircase and I opened the door and I was like ah can you help me and it was like this young guy and he goes uh no English and I was like what language do you speak what language I grew up in New York I speak a little bit of every language and he was like Francais and I was like ah Il y a une mort dans mon chambre because I forgot how to say mouse and everything. So I basically just said, There's a death in my house. <laughs> and he was like, huh? And I could see in his eyes his mom being like, Don't go to New York because they will kill a crazy woman, will kill you. And I was like, Il y a une mort dans mon chambre. That's not bad for a moment of panic. Right? But then I started going like, Mouse. Ni, ni, ni. <laughs> Did he come and help you? Yes. Then he came and helped me. He threw the mouse away. And then I and then my mood completely changed because uh, I'm probably really actually uh, clinically insane. And I was like, thank you. Merci. 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 I am your neighbor. I was so insane. I was like, I am your neighbor. And he's like, we're moving. Yeah. I was like, I am your neighbor. My name is Lucy. What is your name? I like even said it in a French accent in English. And he goes... Louis. And then I was like, oh my God, should I kiss him? <laughs> Is he my soulmate? And then the mouse like stuck its head out of the bag and was like, kiss him. No. Um, but yeah, that's the nice story, story of <laughs> Il y a mort dans ma chambre. <laughs> Chloe Hollings. Uh, I could talk to you for the rest of my life and I will <laughs> because you're my friend. But, um, you know, I love sayings. I always say that since we um, don't have a ton of time. I'm just going to tell you one that I found, and then I'm curious if you have one mm -hmm. that you like. I found one that I thought was funny. Um, avoir une chat dans la gorge. Oh. To have a cat in the throat. Yes, it's not une chat. It's un chat. Un chat. Did I say une chat? Because un chat means a cat. Une chat means a female pussy? cat. Also means a pussy. Oh, I have a pussy in my throat. Also very <laughs> good. <laughs> Mike, ever had that before? <laughs> uh, yeah, I Do you know what it means? I have a pussy in my throat. What it does it mean? To just have a little like. <clears throat> so you have like a hairball. I guess that's hairball. what it refers to. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so it's not that exciting. 
Not really. All right. Well, um, how about mets toi à quatre pattes et moi That means get on all More fours exciting. and like me. <laughs> uh, not a very common saying. <laughs> uh, maybe say not in Montmartre. <laughs> but if you go down to... The Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, do you have one that you like? Uh, the, I mean, there are a few that I like. Uh, couper les cheveux en quatre. Couper les cheveux en quatre? Couper les couper. cheveux en quatre. Ah, oh, cut your hair at four? In fours. In fours? Cut your hair in four. What the fuck does that mean? It means like being super specific, like to be nitpicking. In fours? Couper les cheveux en quatre, yeah. In fours. What well, are in fours? Four or, or in four. In a square. Uh, no, I mean... Oh. Uh, <laughs> You're like, cheveux. no. Okay. Like you take a hair and you cut it in four. Oh, in four slices. Yeah, I guess. Oh, interesting. Okay, I yeah. like it. That is very weird. Um, does anybody ever say oh, 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 in France? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all these things that I also don't realize. Mike like I wanted to know too. I never realized. <laughs> That's how I talk. No, when but I'm like in France. I just say that to people. I just go grunt at them. <laughs> My, I also don't know. My boyfriend is not French, and he notices that when I start speaking French, I start going, oh, yeah. I don't see that about myself, you know? <laughs> so maybe we go, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> but it's like, oh, la, la. Oh, you we guys say, say all that the all the time. Yes, but I didn't realize it and, until and I focused on it. Not only do you say oh la la, sometimes you go oh la 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 la. Oh la 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 la. Yeah. yeah, and we say it for everything. It's like good, bad, panicking, fearful, joyful. You can, it's everything. Do you say it when you orgasm? <laughs> oh la 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 la. la. <laughs> Does that ever happen? I don't think so. I will. French people, <laughs> let us know. Have you ever said, ooh, la, 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 la? <laughs> I'm sorry. This was going so well. Um, okay, well, Chloe Hollings, uh, the third of her name. Uh, that's a Game of Thrones <laughs> reference. <laughs> that's really bad. Hollings. Hollings. Oh, la, 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 lings. <laughs> Um, are you ready to take the very famous, the very infamous, the much talked <laughs> about and never seen in person? <laughs> ah! Are you ready for the poll questionnaire? Oui or no? Oui. C'est pas possible. C'est possible. Chloe Hollings, if you had to eat one American person, oh who would you God. eat? On a baguette with mustard um, and oh, fromage. I know. The, like the CEO of Monsanto. The CEO of Monsanto? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's probably the only person who deserves to be eaten. Oh, interesting. You know? Mm. Yeah. Wow. So you would sacrifice yourself for the greater good because he would probably be <laughs> full of GMOs, that dude. That is true. Yeah. Although, you know, how, have you ever heard that, like, people who work uh, for Facebook don't let their kids be on Facebook and stuff? Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't eat Monsanto. Okay. So, actually, Fuck it's a that win. Guy. win. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look for him. Yeah. Um, if you could only have one of these two in the world... For the rest of eternity, French onion soup or coco vin? <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of the poll questionnaire. <laughs> I know. I had to throw you a curveball. Um, onion soup? <laughs> you don't like it? The grossest thing I've ever thought of in my life is French onion soup. But have you tasted if it? If I was president of the United States of America, <laughs> I would ban French onion soup every day, all day. Are you frustrated that no one ever gives you the poll questionnaire? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me if I'm frustrated that no one ever gives me French onion soup. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I hate onions. Oh. How do you say onion in French? Onion. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Mm-hmm. You do culturally appropriate, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about. Okay, back to the questions at hand. Please. Chloe Hollings, if you had to make up a catchphrase of the, for the United States of America, what would the catchphrase be? It can be in French, too. 
Just <rire> FYI. Liberté, égalité, fraternité, not! <rire> um, it would be a catchphrase. Um, a don't let your guard down. <rire> oh my God. <rire> Welcome to America. You're fucked. <rire> Oh, I think it's cool. There's no it's, peace here. It's really cool, but don't let your guard down. <laughs> wow. It's really cool, but don't let your guard down. How do you say, what do you say that in French? Oh, um, c'est cool. Mais, uh, bah, I hate translating. I don't oh, know. Really? Um, yeah, and I get words mixed up all the time. Like one day someone was running into a pool and I wanted to tell them like, it's not deep, but I couldn't find the word deep in English. So I was like, it's not Profound. <laughs> in French, it's profond. I love uh, it. Anyway, don't let your guard down. Uh, it's okay. Know. We don't need to know. Yeah, who it's knows? For who America. Cares? I'm it's sorry. a catchphrase for America. No, this is a She's lie. not really French, guys. I'm sorry. It's the only person I could find that was would, willing. was willing to do this. Um, uh, she's really from Texas. <laughs> Paris, Texas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chloe Hollings, if you could ban one American food, what would you ban? Well, any food created by Monsanto. Any food created by Monsanto. Yeah, so I think all that's food. Good, so all food. Yeah. Basically all food. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That would be good, I think. Or that fake mustard. What's the fake mustard? Oh, well, I think it's what you call mustard. <laughs> oh, sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know what I'm referring just... to? Apparently, we just don't know because we call it mustard. Is it, is it, well, is it? What is, what is not Dijon mustard? You know that Dijon mustard is not French? Ha! Yes, it is. No, it's not. You know, Dijon is a French city. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> But it's really not. No, seriously, now that this whole crisis is happening, oh, you yeah. don't have any Dijon mustard in France because it's not made there. No, because no, because the grains uh, have been imported from the Ukraine. But exactly. that's just a result so of really, globalization. Mm, you should call but it originally... Dijon mustard. Because that's how they say it in, in Ukraine. Mustardsky. Mustardsky Dijonsky. <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to. I'm sorry, I take it back. Please don't cancel me, Ukrainian yeah. people. We love you. Uh, okay, fine. So you hate American mustard. Um, okay, I'll go back to the Monsanto thing because I feel like that was way more... <laughs> more PC? Way more acceptable for you. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. I love all mustard. I could eat mustard just out of the, any type of mustard. Really? Big mustard fan. Mike? I, I, I love mustard, and I disregard everything you said about <laughs> French only having one mustard. It's <laughs> <That's> despicable. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You see, now I want to take it back. <laughs> uh -huh. You're apologizing. That's true. But you gave us crepes, so it's all good. Yes, crepes are. Crepes are the best. French, yeah, very French. If you could add one face to Mount Rushmore, whose face would you add? <gasps> oh, hoo, 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 hoo. well, the face. Oh, my God. This is going to sound so cheesy, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just the face of a child. Just any child? Yes. What if the child's an asshole? Oh, but no child No child is an asshole. Okay. Look at Hitler. He was a child one. <laughs> well, I mean, if a child is an asshole, it's because the adults around him did a very shitty job. That's what I believe. Okay. You think no one's born an asshole? Yes. Hmm. I do believe that. Everyone's born nice and great and beautiful? Yes. Okay. And I actually... <laughs> no, no, no. No, and there's a, there are actually, like, studies that kind of prove it. That prove like, that no one's an asshole when they come out? No, that proves that, like, our our instincts are to be generous, to help... If we're not, if we're not like in survival mode, if we're not like completely panicked, if we haven't been beaten, <laughs> beaten up and insulted. What about those asshole children on YouTube that make like $9 million a year? What do you mean? They're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's too late for them. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no. I, I think you're right. We are innately um, good. But, I mean, and then we get corrupted. Of, yeah, that's pretty what I fast. believe. Yeah. But... Yeah, no, you're right. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay. You know what's coming. I hope that you've thought about this because uh, you do, you have listened to this podcast before. So I hope <laughs> that you actually have an answer prepared. Uh, yes. Chloe Hollings, 
do you know how I can meet the rock? I fooled you. I fooled you. <laughs> <laughs> really no. is that your question no 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 it's it's obviously hazed dazzled off <laughs> <sighs> i do know how you can meet david Hasselhoff. shut up i do oh, i no. mean i have a pretty good cry. idea is he outside did you bring I him really i fantasized about doing that but i i can't i don't know him um but wouldn't that be so cool like close your eyes yeah um i would fucking faint that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> Get him invited to a convention. <sighs> what? Yeah. Well, I don't know that people will ha want, have to want to meet him to go to a convention. There, it has to, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's there, true. Actually, there, does people he have do want to meet him. Well, yes. No, it's just me. <laughs> I'm the CEO, the only person. I don't think so. You're right. Get him invited. Okay, yeah. I can't even get, get myself him. invited anymore. <laughs> yes, you can. You go to a con and then you get him invited. And then uh, you meet him in the green room. And then I stand <laughs> online <laughs> and ask for an no. autograph. Uh, yeah, no, then I meet him yeah. in the green room. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a good idea. Another idea, because I have been listening to your podcast, mm -hmm. is that you create a show. So this is a, a little more costly. But uh, you create a show where... That is called Finding David Hasselhoff. I actually, I've been wanting to do that. I have a friend in Hamburg who's also, uh, in Berlin, who's also from Hamburg, also a fan. And we wanted to make a documentary called Finding David. Really? About us searching for David Hasselhoff. Yeah, right. there's a long story there. How we were convenient. We were at a party, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah. And we said, if we should make this documentary, give us a sign. We were a little drunk, too. But um, <laughs> the lights turned off in that moment. <gasps> And it was because a guy was leaning against the light sh switch and his name is David. Was David. That is a sign. What are you, what, what when was this that? This was 20 years ago. <laughs> no, literally. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't okay, know. Well, I'm here I don't... to complete this puzzle. Finding David Hasselhoff or David H. Over there. And every episode, you try out one of the, one of the answers that has been given to you on this podcast. Okay, I love it. Uh, only problem is that most people say send him a message on social media. No, they don't. One person said, <laughs> "Stay around, stay, stay around." Like, Excuse in, me. In the palace, <laughs> I have my notebook here of David Hasselhoff answers, yes. and uh, that was only two people out of twenty-nine. So it is so true. <laughs> one of them said, "Go to the Palisades." Another one said, "Go to the airport." That's true. Uh, another one. I mean, there were a few. <laughs> there were a few ones. I love it. You are right, <laughs> Chloe Hollings. I'm going to do this. This is the start of a brand new life and a Netflix show. So you heard it here first, Finding David. It's happening. Chloe Hollings, you're the best. Where can people find you on le social de media? They can look for me on Instagram, and sometimes I'm there and sometimes I'm not. But um, Instagram, Chloe underscore Hollings. Um, Twitter, but I never go there, so forget about it. Just Instagram. Just Instagram, Paris, L.A. My um, phone number is... <laughs> Exactly. Uh, we'll sell her phone number for only five dollars on Patreon. If uh, that's actually one of the extras on Patreon, if you want <laughs> Chloe's phone number at the lowest tier, we'll throw that in for you. Um, Chloe, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I love you. You're one of my favorite per people on earth, and um, we could talk to each other for hours. And maybe we'll do a second part to this. <gasps> uh, we have to say thank you to Douchebag Steve. Thank you, Douchebag Steve. And thank you to a new patron, patron Craig. Thank you, Craig. Craig, we love you. <laughs> uh, um, and thank you to Mike Albanese. Oh, wow. How good is Mike Albanese? He's the bestest of the best. Thank you to everybody who listened to this episode. We love you so much. Please check out everything that Chloe does is in Overwatch 2, lots of other stuff, more books coming your way that she's writing and has is is in the, uh, in the works, are being published. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Right now i'm sorry we love you thank you for listening we'll be back soon leave us a review leave us a rating subscribe follow we love you goodbye if you like what you just heard don't forget to rate review subscribe recommend to all your friends and if you hated it recommend it to your enemies thank you for listening to immigrant jam the podcast with me lucy pole have a delicious and nutritious day